Today on the 737 NGXC, we are at the Aviation Megastore close by Schiphol in, uh, in the Netherlands. Like I promised in my last video, we're going to get a new toy for our sim. You probably already guessed what it is, since it's uh, in one of the comments. We're going to go inside now. I really don't think I'm going to be able to film inside. Uh, I'll try if I can, uh, but uh, I'll do an unboxing when I get home and uh, and you'll see a little bit more uh, of it. I hope you enjoyed my little trip today. I must say I feel really lucky to have the Aviation Mega Store close by. They stock parts from every major supply and I can simply drive and pick them up saving loads on shipping costs. In addition, when something goes wrong, they'll be my support without me having to deal directly with the suppliers. But now back to the yoke. 
I like to do something different today. For those of us that either don't like to buy every single part already made, uh, like the stand for the map or the side walls or similar parts, or maybe just cannot afford like me, there is always the possibility to build them. But in order for us to build something, we need the measures of the main hardware, like the yoke. In fact, if I had decided to build things around the yoke already, trust me, now I would have to start again. Sometimes it's so hard to find the right info on the net, and because of this, I decided to take all the main measures of this yoke so that you won't need to wait like me before building the stand for the rudder pedals like I did. So let's get to it. Note, since I'm in Europe, all measures will be in millimeters and centimeters, which can easily be converted online if you're not familiar with the metric system. I will start with the thickness of the bottom plate, which measures 3.2 millimeters. Then, standing in front of the yoke, I will measure the width of the plate. which comes out to about 35.5 centimeters long. Next, I'm checking the length, and as I thought, it's the same as the width, so just basically a square part. Next, the box where all the springs and the motors are. Again, checking the width as I stand in front of it, uh, and then the length. And as you can see, this is not square, so be careful. Following is the height of the box. Now to the column. Since here there is a curve, I'll first take the measure starting from the end of the bottom box that we've just measured up to where the curve starts. And that's about 60 centimeters. And finally we check the last top part. I'm using a straight object here to help me making sure that uh, the measuring tape stays straight. This measures about 11.5 centimeters. The last part will be the position of the USB cable. Note that this is 1.5 centimeters from the ground, so be careful when building around. Make sure to have enough room also for the USB cable protruding from the back. This is really nice yoke. Bear in mind, my predecessor was a SciTech yoke, so in all honesty, I don't have much to compare it with. But this I know, the change in how flying feels between now and before is like night and day. I'm extremely happy about this purchase. It comes with the chart holder for free, and the one thing I'm not happy is the fact that the bottom plate is light and it requires to really secure the yoke to the ground while when using it. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't done yet, please think about subscribing so you will f be notified of my next videos, uh, which will be about building the support for the yoke to be mounted and lifted a few centimeters up from the platform. Thank you for now. See you next time.